Orient just launched a new chronograph with a beautiful panda dial, a solar power movement and it's a diver. As the community shows us, there is not necessarily a hype for Genta designs or the funny color dials. There is hype on the panda dials as well. Seiko proved us last year that the speed timer panda chronograph hype is real. And for good reasons, when I tried the Seiko Panda, I was really impressed by the resemblance with the Rolex Daytona appearance, in size as well. But $750 for a solar quartz, I don't know what to say. However, the sister brand Orient came up with a more interesting offering. A solar quartz chronograph movement on a true Panda dial, cased into a diver design with 200 meters or resistance at less than half of the price of the Seiko's speed timer. Now that is exciting, because the Panda design is there, the reliability of the solar chronograph module is there, and the robustness of a diver is there as well. And all we need to know is if the quality is there and the comfort of this chrono diver meets our demands. As for Orient design and quality, the brand kinda kept the same level of quality for years already. If other brands like Citizen, Timex or Seiko came up with new modern finishings and exciting designs, it feels like Orient kept the same traditional design language and quality. I think the best keyword is indeed traditional. The cases have the same shape with the same lack of certainty on the facets, the bracelets with the stamped clasps and the hollow end links. As well for their trimmed bezels, they still keep the same bezel insert design on their modern divers, which agree it's part of their design language. And although the trim decorative bezel is now more certain and sharp, the overall design still reminds us of the early 90s watch designs. However, don't get scared, this new Panda chronograph is more exciting than the older versions. This model is built on the design language of the new generation of Mako 3. In fact, this chrono must be the chronograph extension of the Mako 3. And here you can spot the bezel with the same printed markers, the same loomed markers on the dial, with the same 12 o'clock numerals, but also the same sword hands. And as for the size of it, this new solar chronograph diver doesn't sit on the larger side. We can spot it side by side with its iconic cousin, the 007. The case, indeed having crown guards, measures at the base 42.5 mm, but the bezel is smaller than the case footprint. So we have a cryptic design as I call it, the base is larger, followed by the bezel, narrowing down towards the sapphire crystal. As specifications, we have the following measurements, 42.5mm in diameter, with a compact lug to lug of 48mm having 13mm in height, 22mm between the lugs and weights, 150g on a bracelet. And this is quite curious because the watch doesn't feel that heavy. We have a sapphire crystal, a redesigned aluminium bezel insert, and a signed screw down crown which ensures 200m wear resistance. Inside we have the quartz solar module VS752 with an accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds but per month, not per day. On the display we can find the normal seconds counter on the left hand side, 1224 hours counter on the right side and the chronograph counter which is on the bottom. Plus a date at 4 o'clock which I often forget that is there. This model comes exclusively on a bracelet and costs between $300 and $330. And now moving to the dial, this is very interesting as I mentioned, not a boring one for sure. When I unboxed this, previewing the watch in low light conditions, I thought the dial was silver, but in reality it's not white nor silver, it's a pearl color. And it gets more interesting because it has a sunburst effect as well, complemented by the unusual panda subdials, which are serving actually as the solar panels of the watch. And it's very interesting how much depth they offer, we can spot how the printing reflects in those fun and rounded solar panels. Besides that, there is the highly polished reflective chamfer on the edges of the subdials which interacts with the light pretty well. And as color accents, besides the red shield of the logo, there are no other tones than the creamy pearl color or the dark grey accents on the hands or the markers outlines. I love how the brand made the hands black to ensure contrast with the surface, but also the small subdial hands are darkened which provides a sober and a cool atmosphere to the dial. 
and its composition I love the way Orient integrated the specs and the signature of the brand on top, fitting the handwritten chronograph label but also the 20 bar text. And as for Lume, Orient was always a brand whom I assume uses a similar Lumibrite receipt similar to the Seiko brand. And I love how in low light conditions the Lume has enough power to brighten the dull surface surroundings as well. The bezel insert as we discussed is pretty much inspired, if not the same insert as the new generation of Mako 3. It is matted and well integrated with the overall design, and unlike previous models the trimming of the bezel is more modern. The printed numerals are bigger and sharper, and the bezel feels more actual, as a 2023 model. And then in regard to the bezel action, if you're curious if something was changed, well, in a way yes, but mainly it remains the same. The sound of the inner spring remained the same. You can rotate the bezel with the same intensity, but it feels more sharper. As for the case, this chrono diver, and unlike other versions, feels more certain. The shapes are better defined and the polished brush decorations bring more value to the case. I like the new chamfer and the way it splits the top brush from the side one, and the way the case arches to form the crown guards. And then the bracelet is mainly the same sensorial experience of any Orient diver in this price range. Besides the finishing which feels better machined, the clasp, the design and the less tapered bracelet feels to be in the same traditional Orient manner crafted. So nothing new here. However, on a 22mm strap, things are changing, the watch becomes more fun on a white strap or more practical with a curved black rubber strap. I think the watch has a lot of potential as long as you can fit some comfortable straps on it as these 7 friends and watches rubbers which I installed on this watch. The link is in the description. As comfort and looks, I think this watch sits well on the wrist due to the flat case back which helps the watch to lay down on the wrist with the lugs but also with the case profile. And although this watch weighs around 150 grams, on the wrist the weight is not noticeable. I find it balanced and comfortable. Overall, I think this Mako Chrono Diver is a brilliant move from the brand. The 7S752 movement is a new module or a caliber for the brand with a lot of similarities to the more expensive V192 which equips the Seiko Speed Timer Solar Chronograph. As a personal note, I love the elegance and the panda dial, but also the practicality and the robustness of the diver. I think the bezel is discreet enough and I often consider the watch a chronograph rather than a diver. This is definitely a keeper in my collection and I can't wait to launch it in the sea because the color of the dial has the potential to make a summer watch out of it, especially with the addition of a white rubber. In the end, I'm really curious to know what do you think about this $300 chrono diver? Is it worthy for your wrist? Please let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you're new around, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and until next time, be brave, stay safe.